Hi, this is Ken Wolf, Artistic Director of the Manhattan Repertory Theater, and we are here with our podcast series. Today, we are interviewing Tyler Hampong, the writer and star of Mooney Mercury, and Tim Martin Krauss, the director of Mooney Mercury, which is playing February 4th, 5th, and 6th at 7 p.m. at Manhattan Rep. Hi, guys. How are you doing? Very well. Good. Thank you. Great. Uh, Tyler, now, M- Mooney Mercury is just this wonderful interesting sci-fi play with time travel and an evil dictator and <laughs> it's really wonderful how did tell us a little about the play and how it evolved and how you got here yeah well a lot of elements go into it um i think i can break it down into the three sections it started out with um with the dead men don't dance which is the first uh first first part of it they all have different names but you never find out because obviously they're they're all together underneath Mooney Mercury, but it goes Dead Men Don't Dance, The Time Machine, and uh, Mooney Mercury of the Twilight Sky. I think where the first one came from was um, my love for comic books. And uh, yeah, I, um, I'm a big fan of Goon and, uh, and Batman and all that, all that type of dark, um, dark horse and dark comedy type stuff. So uh, what came from... What came from the Dead Men Don't Dance was something I developed in high school when my friend said, why don't you write a play about somebody dragging around a dead body? So I thought, well, what if the dead body could talk? And that's where that came from. That's great. Um, Tim, tell me about directing this fascinating play. What were the challenges? What are the joys? Well, uh, when Tyler passed me the script and asked me to read it, I was fascinated with it. because mo- mostly because of its theatrical potential. And uh, when it got to the point uh, where he asked me to direct it, I basically decided I would look at it as an existential comedy about politics and the meaning of life. And so therefore, within that parameter, I could ground it and had a framework to work from and uh, also give the actors or encourage the actors to have a lot of theatrical creativity within that. Cool. What are the challenges? I mean, how do you pull off time travel? Well, actually, I think the, the biggest challenge was to keep it grounded yeah. so that you could be as absurd as you wanted to be with it. So basically, it was about keeping the actors focused on the events of the scenes and having action that was clear and logical and creating all of the relationships between the characters within it. And then within that, allowing the absurdity and the craziness to... And the time travel itself, uh, well, that's more of a technical thing. And since we've adapted it uh, this time for a smaller theater, uh, it's actually been kind of fun because we get to reinvent the wheel. The last time we had a lot of fog machines and lighting effects and music, and uh, this time was a little more scaled down, a little more imaginative. You have to get a little more theatrical, which is always always fun. Exactly, intimate. Intimate. Cool. Cool. Uh, so, Tyler, why would people enjoy this show? Why would they want to come see this? What, what are some of the joys and fun of the show? Well, I think um, I'm just a general fan of everything. I think I try to put uh, whatever I can into this that that inspires me and what I think will inspire other people. There's, again, I said that it's um, chopped up into three different parts. There's There's existentialism, there's philosophy and politics. And um, I'm not saying that I'm a professor or teacher or any of this, but I did my studies and I'm, I wrote it from, a, from the point of view or the intention of entertaining people. So I'm hoping that uh, people will love it as much as, uh, as much as I loved writing it. Cool. One of the things that I want to add, too, that, that Tyler did such a great job of is he took all of these great lofty ideas and he, with the humor and the absurdity, they... They become entertaining as well as thought-provoking, so they aren't just uh, heavily pedantic, basically. And I thought he did a great job of making it fun to watch, and yet you could walk away from it and actually think about it and think about some of the concepts that were within it. Interesting. How how are the actors uh, enjoying it? What what is their experience doing something so interesting and, and a little different? Uh, well, I think they, at first, they, some of them were a little freaked out by the expansiveness of it because they were used to working a little more naturalistically. But I think once we got into the rehearsals, uh, the, uh, the basic grasp, uh, understanding that the naturalism within the context of the style actually opened them up, they had a lot more fun with it. And I think that was the, the end result. We ended up having a, a ton of fun with it. Interesting. But one of the actors could now comment on that. 
Yeah, well, I mean, uh, I, acting in it, I had to separate myself from the writer, and I had to be able to take direction well because I wouldn't. I, I mean, I'm not observing myself. I, I have to. I have to give control over to the director. So I think um, I th that wasn't the hardest part of it, actually. I think the the hardest part um, was adapting some of the script when when going along because some stuff didn't work. We had to change it. And uh, we had to we uh, we had to all do it as an ensemble. We had to all adapt it together. But I think um, in its difficulty, that's that's where where uh, I can be most proud of Mooney Mercury. Yeah, that's fun. Okay, here's sort of my James Lipton question. I always end with uh -oh. this question. Um, what? We'll start with uh, with Tim. Uh -oh. What's most important to you about theater? Why is theater so cool? Uh. Hmm. I need I need that minute to digest <laughs> so I don't have a stupid answer like a lot of those uh, actor studio ones. Uh, what, theater is is mostly it's important because it's it's alive. That's really the most important thing about it. And as a form of communication and enlightenment and art, it basically makes people think in the moment. And it's not passive. It's very different than television where you're sitting back and it's coming at you. Even though you're watching theater, you are a participant. The audience is a huge vastly important part of theater and that's what makes it so important versus film versus television it's it will never go it, there, nothing will ever duplicate it cool and tyler i think the i think the most important part for me is um making something that's thought provoking making something that people can enjoy but then leave the theater and think whoa that that really um made me think about something and i think you can get that from anything really i mean um for the first scene, uh, the two characters' names are Tom and Jerry. And uh, I did that because, you know, the cartoon Tom and Jerry, it seems very basic at a level. But um, when you really look at it, Tom is what they called the, the British in World War II, and Jerry is what they called the Germans. So if you look at it at that level, you think that the cartoon, they're constantly fighting. And... Um, I kind of translated that into the play a lot too, where they're constantly fighting, but then they have this kind of um, camaraderie, and there's peace at the end. But uh, I think just as long you can find you can find inspirational uh, little nuggets in everything, and I think that's that's what I want people to take from it to take to just be moved. That's great. Well, thank you both for being here, guys. Thank um, you very much. I am so excited about seeing the show next week. Um, everybody out there, please come see Mooney Mercury February 4th, 5th, and 6th at 7 p.m. at Manhattan Rep. You can uh, call for tickets at 646-329-6588. I'll be there. And uh, thanks, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you.